Yeah, listen, they go coming home, in. Home. Yeah, listen, family is coming in into the into the comments and section. People are, are lined up for this one. It must be our guests because I know oh, no, I know no, anybody here it. to see me. So, <laughs> Montel, stop how you it. living, brother? I'm good, man. Blessed as usual. You know, yeah. today's a sad, another sad day in our, oh. you know, you know, with this thing going on, man, and this guns and, uh, you know, I just, I feel, I feel, I feel bad that I'm numb to it, that it okay. doesn't move me anymore. All right. So hold on, yeah. let's talk. We're, we're going to talk about that. We'll talk that's about all, that, that's yeah, obviously but... our, our lead social impact yeah. story. We want, we want to get into that. And, and it's unfortunate that we kind of both feel kind of that same way. You know, it's, 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 it's a tragedy, even though no one's been murdered or, but it's just seeing these types of stories happen again. But uh, before we get into all these, I want to say what's up to the folks that are in the community already chiming in. So listen, let me let's go ahead and pull this up. Look at this man. I, I don't know who that is right there, but some somebody in, in the hold on let me let me bring up this guy i don't know who that is right there y'all keep holding on you'll know in a minute golden phoenix in the building okay we got some new folks in the room this this may be some of our guest community members coming in but if not golden phoenix were you here last week i don't know i'm old brother i'm old uh Noosh is in the building okay appreciate you for being here and listen kd is here love love it love it tell everyone to come through as well i'm gonna stop procrastinating i'm gonna stop procrastinating and we're gonna go ahead and bring this man in this is another quality individual another brother down from the the uh, southern california area involved in sports involved in education involved in our youth without further ado ladies and gentlemen dr james <laughs> riley Everybody, come on! I give him the doctor title. You, you, you may hey, have man. a master's, you may have a PhD, but you're gonna be a doctor when you, when you come on the team. No sleep. How you living, man? Hey, I'm doing great, man. I appreciate the invitation. To, yes, sir. To hop on with you and uh, Montel, just uh, just the honor and the privilege, and hopefully I can bring some uh, a little spice to the conversation that we're about to have tonight. So it's uh, it's it's a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. Definitely, man. Listen, t tell the folks who you are and what it is that you do. I always like to have folks kind of tell their own origin story to kind of set precedence before we get into this conversation about the, we got about five or six topics. We're going to try to breeze through those, but tell the folks who you are, brother. Absolutely. So uh, my name is James Riley and uh, you know, you call me, you know, Mr. Riley, or you, you refer to me as doctor. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. But um, um, I'm actually an early childhood special educator here in the Los Angeles area. I've uh, been teaching in the school district. Uh, I believe this is my 24th or 25th year in education. Um, I've taught everything from kinder up to uh, middle school, eighth grade. Um, now I am a pre-K pre teacher in Los Angeles Unified. And you probably have heard uh, what's going on down here in, um, in L.A. Uh, one of our uh, uh, sister unions, um, they're actually on strike, participating in the uh, three-day strike with them. We're standing alongside them. It's not the teacher strike, uh, which the media would have you to believe, but it is um, our assistants, our librarians, bus drivers, cafeteria staff, TA, special ed assistants, we are standing strong with them. We're not crossing the line. And so we're uh, just kind of helping our cause as well because we're working without a contract. So, man, it's, uh, you know, I'm a father, I'm a husband. Um, I'm involved in high school football, sports, my three sons, two of which have D1 scholarships. Uh, we're working on the uh, on the third one. And I have a daughter who's a cheerleader. And so um, Christian, uh, man of the faith. And so just a well-rounded dude over here um, in what I call uh, the West Side. So I'm not throwing up any gang signs. It's well, just look, look West behind Side. You. You, you, <laughs> behind you, you throwing up the W. Come on. You. <laughs> Listen. West Side is just where I live. So, you know, yeah. uh, this is Mr. Riley coming to you live from the West Coast, the best coast, the West Side. See, that's here we I go. We, we, we can agree with that, too. Appreciate you for being here, but hopefully we don't get into no arguments. You're already getting some, <laughs> some compliments on, on the, the look and feel of, of your room. So definitely I appreciate, appreciate it. you for appreciate being it. here. Uh, let, it. Man, let's, let's go ahead and get into it, man. Martel started talking about it already. Uh, and again, since you guys are both in education and, you know, my wife's in education, so we kind of can uh, relate to unfortunately what what's going on with this right right now we got the situation in Colorado right young, young brother out there uh, unfortunately shot up school a little bit right went went after some administrators shot two administrators the two administrators were admitted to the hospital with 
uh, injuries, not life threatening injuries, which is which is great to hear. Excuse me, great to hear. But unfortunately, the young seventeen year old guy fled, and his car was found about a hundred miles away from from where he was. Talk to us, what you your thoughts on again? Why Montel would say that he feels numb to these types of situations? Is it because we're continuing to see them, or I'm not even gonna put words in your mouth. Let's start with you, uh, James. Well, we see these stories come up, and again, you're in the education industry. If, if something like this happened at one of your schools, and, and what, what are your thoughts on this, man? Man, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a rough, difficult situation, especially when I believe this school has just experienced something within the past couple of months. Yeah. Um, and you know, just kind of reading through the article, man, they're always going through lockdowns and things of that nature. And so, you know, we we practice at my school, we practice lockdowns and 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 whatnot. But there's nothing like the real thing, and you know. We, we really don't want the real thing to happen, especially out here. We've heard of a lot of crazy things happening, you know, outside of, uh, you know, schools in California. But, man, um, this is crazy. And I'm, I'm just kind of it's hard for me to believe that, you know, uh, they knew that he, you know, had some difficulty. And so they right. made a modification for him to be searched before coming into the school. And so right off the bat, it kind of tells you, it's like, okay, if you have to be searched every day, that that's a problem. And right. you're putting some folks in jeopardy, you know, you put in some lives and, you know, they went to search this young man and sure enough, it didn't go, it didn't, it went left. Right. Yeah. It, it went left. And so, you know, thank God that, you know, no one was, was uh, wounded, uh, you know, f- uh, fatally wounded. But, um, man, we, we gotta do, we gotta do something a lot better in our schools, uh, to help people who, who need some assistance and, you know, going back to our strike, that's what, that's what we're fighting for over here. We're fighting for more counselors who can help some of our young people in our schools, um, you know, get them the resources, the mental health resources that they need. Now, I don't know what was available to him at his particular school, but, um, it's just crazy, man. It's, it's just crazy. And my heart goes out to uh, anyone who's put in that situation and, you know, Lord forbid that happened to one of our LA schools. Right. Um, right. It, it is, is, you know, that's something that I don't want to ever have to experience as a parent, as an educator, um, as a member of the community. And so it's rough. And so hopefully that community can bounce back and uh, get back on the right track and, uh, you know, maybe get some, some assistance, some resources for this young man uh, before he does something, crazier than you know what he's already done well he so he's been expelled from school right at subsequent to this right here but that's that's what that the red border down at the bottom is saying that the the search for the suspect for the suspect is still happening and that he's been expelled from the school but Montel, again we unfortunately and and chief is saying again like another week another story about a young brother committing an unspeakable act of violence man it we're we're tired of thoughts and prayers thought we're tired of hashtags Right. We're, we're, we're really tired of having to lead with these kinds of stories, man. And then it's actually it's actually almost bad that we, we get to the point that we say we're numb to it. Right. Because I, I really wish that we, we didn't get to that point. But talk, talk to me a little bit about your thoughts when, when you saw the story again, man. You know, first thing this morning, here, here we are with this type of a situation happening with our youth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's disheartening again. Um and this is not only the only one this week. I mean, over the, I think, or last week, I shared with you, James, that shooting that happened in Dallas at a yeah. basketball game. Yeah. You know, at a championship basketball game inside the arena, somebody's shooting. Now we have this situation coming. Um, you know, these young people have access to guns more than they have access to internet at their homes. Mm. And it's, it's freaking frustrating. And it, it, and it pisses me off that we, especially in the state of California, where we're the fourth largest economy in the world, Make it three point three thirty six billion a year, and we can't and we can't pay our teachers. We can't pay the people to support our teachers, you know, without them having to go on strike and have to go argument. We can't protect our youth no more. Let's, let's just call it what it is. We can't protect our youth anymore. Every time your child steps out of the house and goes to a vent, there is risk involved now. And we're not talking about risk. There's a fight. We're not talking about risk. There's a stabbing. We're talking about yeah. there's a fatal risk that can be shot at any time on any given day because somebody's in a piss poor mood. I, I'm tired of using the, the I'm tired of using the excuse of mental health yeah. because you're not mentally healthy when you grab yeah. a gun. You're not mentally incapacitated when you load the gun. 
You're not yeah. mentally incapacitated when you drive to the school. You're not mentally incapacitated when you're walking up to the school. You have Absolutely. every intention and thought what you're about to do. That is no mental health. You're conscious. That's a conscious decision that you make. And unfortunately, we give people a pass because they're adolescents. I'm sorry, some 17 year, a 17 year old to me is not an adolescent because I was doing adult things when I was 17. So I knew there was Speak dope on that. That's the truth, right? That's that's true. He, yeah, this I, person there was a is responsible for all their actions. You're right. <laughs> yeah, there was adult ramifications for the actions I did at the age of 17. So I'm not going to give you a pass because you're an adolescent. You know what you're doing. Now, if there's things going at home and you have mental health, there's usually a track record, especially at school, schools. There's a track record that your IEP, you have difficult mm -hmm. listening, you have ADD, you have, there's mm -hmm. a track record that leads up to these things. The problem I have is not so much with the school, but I have a problem with the parenting because easily there's other influences that are, that are more, more important than their family is. Because I don't think his mother said, go shoot out somebody or his, his father said that thing. So the other influences that are more important and the fact that he has the accessibility to get a firearm. Mm. Whether it's at the home or on the street. I don't know how many times you gotta get, keep knocking on Congress's door and saying, hey, governor, do something or mayor, do something about getting guns off the street. We say this. Go every ahead, brother. I'll, I'll put the E. I'll the put time. the explicit on it. Don't worry about it. We, yeah. we still monetize. Yeah. We, still <laughs> we keep saying the same thing over and over again, and we're getting yeah. the freaking same result because there's no action taken. Yeah. yeah. So, me, so, me, so what is it gonna take? Is it gonna take a teacher to kill a student? Is that what's going to wake somebody's eyes up? Doubt it. Because every time this happens, you know what's funny? Every time this happens, gun sales go skyrocketing out of the freaking system. So they justify that, hey, let's make more guns because people are buying more guns to protect themselves. Which is all, it's, man, it's just a, a vicious cycle. And the, and now it used to be just adults. It used to be gang members. It used to be people that were involved we in criminal activity. Yeah, it used headlines. to be just those things. Yeah. Now it's the seeping into, seeping into kids that STEM schools. It's seeping yeah. in there everywhere we go. Elementary and they're schools, getting younger and younger. Yeah. They're getting younger and younger. We had a thing in Dallas where that guy killed up in elementary school or shot up those elementary school kids, kids. They're getting younger and younger. I don't know where the displaced rage is. I, I really don't. And maybe it is a mental thing or maybe not. I don't know where the displaced rage is, but I'm tired of giving the pass. Mental health is not an issue. Shit, I went through COVID just like we did. My kids came out fine. Yeah. I don't know what you were doing at your home, but my kids came out yeah. fine. Yeah. It's, my it's, kids it's, don't pick up a book and read. They don't have my kids are not raised on the fucking YouTube. Mm, They're not raised YouTube. on TikTok. Yeah. So so let me let me ask you this because because again, and we talk about mental health a lot. And I, I see folks come chiming in the comments and appreciate that. We're gonna keep going with that. And you know, Mr. Riley, I, I want to go into that, right? Where, where is the onus, right? Who who owns having because unfortunately, three out of five of the stories that we're gonna talk about tonight deal with some young cats walking around with a firearm getting in trouble and again it's it's becoming so pervasive that we're not only we're not only talking about the outlier stories here on team no sleep unfortunately these are now becoming mainstay stories coming from an educator's perspective james right how, how do we go in there and talk to these young cats this, this young 17 year old uh what, what are you at 17 you're a freshman or you're, you're a sophomore right and, and give them a better route to uh, services, give them a better route, saying that they don't need to necessarily come to school with a firearm in their backpack. How, how do we get to that person? And I, I don't know the answer, but I, but I, again, I just I want to put it up for discussion. How do we get to these people before it gets to a point where they go and start shoot, go into the office, look for two administrators and start shooting administrators? You know, like Montel said, man, it, it, it goes back for me. It goes back to home training. Right. Mm. I mean, you know, you, you, you gotta, um, you gotta know how to discipline your kids in a loving manner. Right. Um, but first of all, you have to provide a, a loving environment for the, for, you know, for the children, for, you know, um, for the babies in, in your house, you have to provide a loving atmosphere, give them everything, not everything that they need, but definitely, uh, you know, the basic things, right? And you want to nurture that thing. You want to nurture their brains, their minds, encourage them to read and be involved in extracurricular activities. And, you know, once you do that, then most likely, you know, you're not going to have to worry about when they get to high school about them uh, being influenced by the wrong people or, you know, constantly looking and relying on social media to dictate how they should live. You know, mm. for me, you know, you, you got to start at the home. 
you know, the, the home is the first is the first school, right? Parents are the first teachers. And so if parents and family and community are not doing what they're supposed to do, then, you know, somehow, some way, um, you know, our, our children are falling through the cracks, right? Um, but also, you know, uh, back to what Montel said about, you know, being 17 and taking responsibility, you know, this 17 year old, you know, young man, ha he has to, because no one is going to actually, uh, you know, put a firearm in his hand. He has to make a conscious decision. And so once he, once he does that, okay, you, you know, you're not eligible to be tried or looked at as a juvenile. You're, you're an adult. Right. right. And so for me, I have to think about it as a parent, right? Um, you know, I trust my kids, but it's like some of the kids, some of the places and things where they want to go, you you want to give them a little freedom to kind of experience what the world has to offer as um, a junior uh, and definitely a senior in high school because, you know, your, your school is going to be that micro, microcosm of America, right? You're going to have an opportunity to vote for your favorite yeah, you know, a uh, uh, associated student body president or whatever, and you know, you, you're gonna have to make some grown up decisions, and so that that high school experience is like a microcosm, and so we have to kind of give some some freedom to our children. But you know, for me, for my, for me and my wife, you know, it's sometimes it's like it's kind of difficult because you know we're you know where are you going. Who are you going with? How yeah. long are you going to be out? Right. And but we we trust our kids. We trust our kids because we've nurtured them. Um, and so for us, it's not about uh, our kids stepping out and doing things that are wrong. It's about some of these other knuckleheads who come and want to, you know, <laughs> call cause problems. So, right? so let me, I trust so, my kids. Yeah, so let me I ask this because, kids. you know, we, we're all somewhat seasoned, right? We, we, yeah. We're at least 40, 50 years old. Uh, I know I'm, I'm thinking, listen, I, I won't get into those numbers, but <laughs> I, I wonder if if it's the way that the legacy household was brought up, right? There, there, there was that extended family, right? There was the aunties, there was the mm -hmm. uncles, there was the grandma, right? There, there was onus and responsibility from those around the neighbors checked in on you made sure that you weren't acting foolish have is it maybe that we've lost that connection nah. to, and that ownership again and, I, and i'm just bringing up some, some yeah. comments just for dialogue i mean i'm, I'm nah. seeing what uh what noosh was saying right and i respectfully like this as well you know he says in all due respect james you could offer every resource there is and these kids were still somehow doing this kind of bullshit so again i, I i'm just kind of bringing up the conversation just to have the conversation I, I truly, I mean, me personally, I think we're in, the, we've been in an era since the nineties till now where we have kids raising kids. Hmm. We have a high rate, especially in our communities, we have a high rate of teenage pregnancy. So mm -hmm. you now have a mother that's 31, yeah. 32 years old that has a 16 year old. They both like the same things that more, that's a friendship. That's not a, that's not a parody. Wow. And I think that 16 year old, that, that 16 year old that had that baby that is now 31 year olds. Her relationship with her mother is probably, or her father is not uh, what we call as a standard relationship. I'm going to call it what it is. If you, your mother loves your money bag, yo, and you love your money bag, yo. <laughs> Make it plain. Your brother. kid there is going to go. emulate yeah. money bag, yo. Hmm. That's, he's going to, that's the, that's the impression. If she looks at him as an attractive, successful young man, and that's what she's pre preaching in her house, he's going to emulate that because he thinks that's successful with his mom. Why do you think we have all these kids with tattoos that are the young age? They're emulating people that their parents like. They have tattoos and all this young age. I, it, it's it. We, we're in a we're we're in a situation where, like I said, these are kids raising kids, and if a kid is raising a kid, it's almost like the blind leading the blind. You got to wait for a mistake in forty four in order for you to learn from. It. Now, if the and let's look at the entertainment value because I don't let them off the the the, the, the ball either. The entertainment what they are looking at is something that's a problem. I love hip hop music to death, but it is detrimental to our community. And I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later yeah. on. That is detrimental to our community because, like us, when we grew up, we had a priority. We had priority. We had different phases. We could listen to, you know, NWA one day. We could listen to Public Enemy the next. Right. These kids nowadays don't have a variety. That's, that, it's one. That, it's one mode. That's it's a good point, right there. Drugs. Right. I mean, there there was a huge that there's a huge dynamic and and a difference there from socially conscious kind of. Uh, one love kind of music and rap and, 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 and lyrics, as opposed to some, some of the other more, more violent type of things. I, I agree with you on that. And we, like you said, yep. we're going to get into that content right, right yeah, there. Yeah. 
I think, I think, but I think also even just out of that, but also on what we see, we had the we had the privilege of having movies like House Party, and we would have movies like other movies. So we had these yeah. comedies that we would listen to. We had a lot of more influences that we could look at that were either fun poking at our coaches or someone looks like us that they were having fun. Nowadays, name a movie that's not so corny that they, these kids can watch that 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 is fun for them to look at. And they, it's okay for them to laugh at, dance to, have fun with instead of look. Every movie we show right now, every music we show right now is thugging it up, thugging it out straight up, being against the wall, representing where you're from, pop mollies, have sex at a young age. It's That's all that's thrown in their face consistently over and over again. And it's just not like you can hear it on the underground. Remember, we used to sneak down and listen to Two Live Crew. We can listen to it in front of our mother's house. Right, yeah, you, their you, mo- their you, mothers you, you're telling the truth. You're not, you're not talking out of turn right now. You know, that's true. You are. Yeah. Their, their mothers and fathers are listening to that in front of them. They're watching those movies in front of them. They are applauding and praising those movies in front of them. So obviously, what are you going to be? If you if you struggle in school or you still have to feel socially awkward, you're going to fit in what you like. You see kids in the same center like that. They like the same exact thing. You fit into the same thing. And in our generation, this generation now, where we didn't have guns that were so prevalent, guns are everywhere now, it seems like. True. Man, this, this is we're not, we're only scratching the surface, and 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 Mr. Rollins, you, you didn't know, man. We, we that this this first story, we always get into it, right? I, I always budget <laughs> twenty five minutes for yeah. for that first story, so so we can get we can get it out, get the emotions out, and we we can have the dialogue. But unfortunately, we're not going to solve this issue. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this young young guy is still on the loose. Uh, I think one thing that is fortunate, though, is that your school district, James, is actually stri- they're striking right now to bring additional resources to have those kinds of conversations with the kids. So that that's one good thing that they're picketing that they're on the line on the line right now, talking to, trying to get the resources, the funding, and things like that. And unfortunately, here's another use case that they can position to leadership and administration and say, "Yes, look look at what happened in Colorado. Let's not make sure let's not make that happen here as well in in our, our neighborhoods." Is, uh, I saw some comments about uh, AJ who has experienced something very similar. So listen, man, shoot me a DM with your email address and we will try to get you online or we'll bring you into the private community, the digital collective and have that inner circle conversation. So I appreciate you guys talking about that as well. Uh, Hey, James, can I bring, bring up something real quick? Yes, sir. So, um, you know, our focus is, is right now just on the one guy, right? Mm. But, you know, uh, just watching that video clip, man, you got people, you got students who are actually afraid to go to school and school. You know, I've always, I've always thought about school being the safest place that you can go, but not in Colorado because they've been so impacted by you know, shootings and lockdowns and this, that, you know, you got a whole bunch of teens in that community who are afraid to return. Now, I believe the school is out for the rest of this week, but man, what's going to happen next week and the week after if something happens. And so again, you got to have, you know, uh, cause not everybody's is, is, is carrying a gun. You know, you got kids who really want to learn and, 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 you know, kind of have a better understanding of, of themselves and where they want to go and how they want to, you know, what college they want to go. They want to have that high school experience, but a lot of these kids now, you know, they're scarred because of this one action. And so we, you know, we have to do better. Yeah. That one dude, that 17 year old, you know, he has, uh, affected a whole group of teens, uh, parents, uh, community members, (laughs) Uh, you know, education specialists in that community. And so hopefully they can get through this whole thing, move by, move past and heal because that's really what needs to happen in that particular community. Yeah. I mean, I keep, I keep glancing over to see if there's been any, any updates while we were talking, but they're still look, looking for that gentleman and, and Laura Williams. Appreciate you being here. This is a, again, you've had an unfortunate situation right there about your sixth, sixth grader being tased. What were you going to say, Montel, before we move on? No, I'm just saying, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Riley's um, information about, you know, like them moving on, but I think we're at a point, man. I think I, at least I know I'm at a point where move, just moving on. Mm. That's the cliche. Yeah. You know, we got to We deal with it. We just got to move on. We got to figure out, move on. And I, and I, and I, and I do applaud you. Like you said, 
the other thousand students that are in that school are now scarred or affected from, and, and those parents are scarred or affected about now the child they've been enjoying or going to a high school experience. I I want to peel the onion back even more. Like parents should be responsible as well. If you're a minor and your kid's got a gun and he's doing a he's doing a criminal act, how come parents aren't held accountable? At least, and I want your opinion. Why are parents held more accountable? And Child Protective Services to me is a freaking joke, man, because I don't know what they do. They mm. go in here, they make assessments. Uh, the, the judge has to either approve it or not. And they're not, they're not filled. They're just basically people that are out there that report stuff and decide whether they want to bring it to charge or not. Situation like this, it should be automatically something that Child Protective Services should be involved in. If there's any other kids in that household, they need to do a fair assessment of that parent is, is capable of raising that kid to not coming in this situation anymore. I mean, there needs to be some kind of trickle down effect that so these things don't happen or so if there's an example, if this does happen, this is what's gonna happen. And I, 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 I'm, I'm not seeing enough I'm not seeing enough accountability for parents yeah. when situations like this happen. And James, I'll, I'll let you go, but I, I do I almost wonder why there was already kind of a an alert for this this young dude as he approached school, right? I mean, he he was already kind of uh highlighted as someone who had issues and could cause something you know, and, and why it, it was just that right you know be, be on the lookout for, for for this young dude as he comes to school when he's probably done something in the past and we don't know exactly what it was that he's done in the past but i mean somebody could have intervened much more significantly and we don't know the whole story right we're monday morning quarterback in this but we, we don't we don't know the entire story but there there should be some more some more uh thumbs down on on the family and on this kid before that he got to this point that he's in right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, it's again, it, it's crazy. And here, here's, here's, here's my last point, man. You know, they knew that he was, you know, uh, yeah, I don't want to use air quotes, but they knew that he had a propensity to, to kind of yeah. go off. Hence, you know, he, he didn't come in with the regular kids. They said he came in like around nine, nine 30. You know, usually I got here school, high school started at 830. So it's just like, and Man, come on, hey, here's, one, here's one more thing. He has his own special entrance. So he doesn't go in with the regular kids. He, he has to go through, you know, not everybody's being checked. It's only this particular dude. So it's just like, okay, y'all already know that, you know, some might pop off with him. And then here's his last, 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 last point. You know, they say they, when they return, they're going to have two uh, police officers, you know, stationed on campus. I'm like, really? Just, just two? Is that all you can do for the rest of I, the school year? I, now, okay, so, now, now you got me. Now you got oh, me. Really, uh, <laughs> all right, we, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I mean, I, I get it. So go ahead, get, get, the, get the last point out, in, man, because we got some other things we want to get into. But no, this is <laughs> okay, this is very important the, as well. So that's why yeah, I want to keep yeah, yeah. going. So I'm, I'm just saying, at the point that they knew he had that he needed to be treated differently mm. there's two sides of that one he's probably embarrassed because he is treated differently right as a kid you know you don't he can't fit in. he has to do things differently and two if they know he's treated differently and they know he's dangerous why are they allowing any humans in school so i'm saying that's a fumble on the faculty and administration yeah. in that district why is, he should have been either homeschooled done school somewhere else if he's a threat to that many people that many kids and they knew he was going to be a threat to their kids and there was a warning he's a threat to that many kids why aren't they not removing it from the removing it from that school and say, hey, you know what? You gotta go somewhere else. You know, we gotta figure out a different educational system system for you because obviously you're dangerous to our faculty and our student body. Yeah. So now I, they should be charged. I, I, in my opinion, they should be they should got some fault to it as well. Absolutely. absolutely. I, I will say, as 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 an educator, there is something called FAPE, free and free and appropriate education. Uh, but his, his appropriateness <laughs> was overextended, I think, to the point where, <laughs> you know, he got to he got to go through a, a, a different entrance than yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's, it's just, that's, it's just it's just crazy. Goodness, it's just maddening. That's what it is. It's maddening. This is going obviously. So we, we've got a list, unfortunately, and the list isn't getting shorter of the stories that we're going to continue to follow what that we've said over the, the years that we're going to continue to follow up. And this is going to be another one that, again, I keep glancing over to see if there's any updates. Um, appreciate the dialogue on that. Appreciate the comments coming in. I see folks that are 
really communicating and asking questions. And I love that. And listen, this, this may also be one of those more extensive conversations that we have within the community on, on the back end. So I'll, I'll do that for everyone as well. Uh, I'm getting heckled for my, my UCLA hat. Listen, <laughs> let, 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 let's go and set that straight. You know, shouts out to Sac, the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, they they in the playoffs. Finally, finally had a winning season. But you know, my my daughter goes to UCLA, and they're you know about about to go up against Don Staley this weekend. You know, they they're gonna go up against Don Staley uh, in the in the in the tournament. So I got to represent my Bruins while they can. I I think it's gonna be tough. Oh Lord, he didn't see he didn't left. Oh no, he I'm did. here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, he didn't. He didn't turn his lights off. Now, see when, when, we, when I started talking about Don. <laughs> Stop playing. See, you you're no, a I'm, producer. You're a video no. producer as well. So you were back there pushing. Wait, buttons. stop pushing buttons. Wait, no, no. I, so I have a confession. My camera is kind of sick, and I'm not going to tell you my brand, but oh, my camera is no. kind of sick. So, it, you know, every now and again, it just needs a little dose of uh, just just a little dose of medicine. So, oh. if you see me blank out, my oh, audio no, was man. good. Yeah, yeah, this is my good. video. You need, need a little yeah. robotessing for that. Oh, <laughs> probably running no cannon over here. Let's 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 go ahead and stay focused. Let's let's move on, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I was telling James, and I'm still going to tell this. This is the first time that I've seen Coach Saban actually have to get up in front of the folk on a lectern and actually make a comment about one of his players involved in a gun-related situation and a drug-related situation and a law abatement situation. So defensive back Tony Mitchell was driving 141 miles an hour as he and another colleague of his were in their car trying to uh, avoid the police. Uh, when the police finally caught up with him, he had, uh, mar- they had marijuana in the car. The, there was a smell of marijuana. They, they appeared to be uh, under the influence as well. Uh, there was a loaded nine millimeter in the car. Tony Mitchell does have a concealed carry permit, but again, loaded firearm in the car, evading police, intoxicated marijuana that is uh, being intent to sell, which it, which is the conversation that they're having right now. Obviously, he's been suspended from all team activities, but again, this is Tony Mitchell is only a freshman. This isn't this isn't a, this isn't a junior or fifth, sixth year senior. This is again a young kid. Right out of high school, freshman out there in Alabama, he he's got his he got his nice car, right? He's playing for Coach Saban, playing for one of the you know the big squads out there. And again, here we are, another gun related story with our youth. I'm not I'm not gonna say why does he have the gun because we we keep asking that. And, and again, growing up in different neighborhoods, growing up in different areas, some of that makes sense. I was just watching a, a story about um, uh, Lil Wayne. Right. And he was talking about, you know, his mom bought him a gun while he was in high school to be safe out there in New Orleans. And right. So so that that was actually something that he grew up in in those particular environments. So so I can hear and I can understand that. But this guy, again, your circumstances, your what you have at stake, what you have to lose. This doesn't make sense to me that Tony Mitchell should be out there running weed, running from the cops with a loaded firearm in his car. And just just going through all those, that's three strikes right there. James, talk to us, man. What do you think about this when you saw this story? Man, listen. Okay, so as a father of Come two, on. there you go. That's where, that's, that's where I parents. wanted to take this. Right, we we gonna we gonna go and get okay. personal. Yeah. Again, it comes back to environment. It comes back to so once you leave high school. You go and you go get your apartment and your dorm or whatever, especially in, at a lot of places, you know, the freshmen have a dorm. And so, you know, you get all these freedoms and sometimes these kids, they, you know, especially, you know, you talking about Alabama, you talking about, you know, upper echelon, you know, uh, they have people waiting on them, uh, you know, hand and foot. Right. And so, you know, for me with this young man, you got to think about the choices that he's going to make. Uh, okay, you got to you got to permit. Cool, but that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to have it on you at all times, right? Unless you're planning to do some do dirty, you, yeah. you, you you're gonna get right. some do dirty. Then if, if you got, you want to have a, a pre yeah. pre uh, pre determined thing that you're gonna do some dirt. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Right? And then you look at this marijuana thing, right? So he, he I'm, I'm gonna bring a story from from uh, one of my experiences with. Uh, with uh one of my sons so you know we move him into the dorm 
it's a four four person dorm. Um, you know, he gets in, you know, he's new to this all, whole thing. One of one of <laughs> one of the roommates smells like weed. And I'm just like right as you move in, like, you're like, oh Lord. As you move it in. And I'm just like, okay. So I know my son, right? And I know, you know, he has some he has some morals. And so he has to come into this environment. And this is like, okay, what, what's up with this dude? And so, you know, he's just like, hey, he's he's making bad choices. This is his first time away from home. He, you know, he's he's doing what he wants to do, right? Because you have the freedom now to do. And I'm just like, look. You know, when you own somebody else's dime, someone has paid for you. Someone has vouched for you. Coaches, admin, you know, I don't know his academic, you know, uh, Brother Mitchell's academic schedule. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, you got folks who have vouched for you. You've worked hard because you're 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 at Alabama. Right. You could go any you could have gone anywhere else. You chose to go to Alabama. And so it's just like, you know, when you're in that position, athletes. Athletes got to make better decisions because all eyes are on you. Yes. If you go to a D1, upper echelon, all these supporters, alumni, they're counting on you. Your family. Think about the shame he's causing to his family. Right. Right. Because it's not just isolated to Alabama. No. Everyone <laughs> who's affiliated we, we, this, this with this is on the D1 cover of ESPN.com, and that's why we talked about this, right? Again, this Man, is now a, a, we a talked blank about spot on, on his family. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, dude, you know, when you get to this point, man, you got to make some grown up decisions. You got to do the right thing because folks are depending on you. You know, I don't know his, his financial situation. I don't know if he plans to, you know, if he wants to get to the league, but look, you had a shot. And now, guess what? It might be gone down the drain because you you driving a hundred and seven hundred and forty whatever uh, kind of mm-hmm. reminds me of uh, the dude in Las Vegas uh, was it Rugs who who was the guy uh, Alabama Rugs yep Alabama yeah he sure was right I'm just same, like okay same squad, what, yep. what's up what's up with the Alabama folks <laughs> so again <laughs> choices 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 you got to make better choices when you're D one college athlete and and not just the I mean. You could be a D2, D3. It doesn't matter because even the lower schools, trust and know, it's going to be in there in, in the city's newspaper. Yeah. The coach is going to have to get up and, and make a, a an announcement, a press conference. Oh, well, Joe Blow, you know, who went to uh, 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 Jack Rabbit State, you know, now that local community is impacted. So it's just... And no, and no yeah, one folks, wants to get saving up there talking about them in, in a negative yeah. connotation, right? Man, that, so Saban that's just a bad thing. <laughs> He, he, he ain't got time, time to talk about that, negative right? stuff. He, I'm gonna and, put this up there. You, see, you probably, probably can see it on his face. You're like, ah, yeah, God, save it. You, come on, you, you know he this. dropped a couple of full letter words when he when he got off the <laughs> microphone. Kevin, he yeah, like, this I, did happen in Florida, but Florida yeah. is right on on the border of Alabama where, where this happens. So, so yeah, Montel, talk about this, man. Here we go again, right? An, another man. situation happening where you got some explaining to do. This, but this. This is a privileged athlete. Let's be honest. Let's call it what it is. This is a privileged athlete, athlete thinking he can get away and he's above everything. And unfortunately, he's going to get another chance. And regardless yeah, of all yeah, y'all, yeah, everybody won't be mad. Everybody won't be upset. Everybody won't be mad. Everybody won't be upset. As long as he ain't killed nobody, he ain't raped nobody, and he ain't said nothing that offends certain communities, he's going to be have another opportunity to play because he's an athlete. If he's an athlete in Alabama, I, I damn sure bet you Morgan State will offer him a scholarship right now if he decides to transfer. <laughs> he, he's got and some, they he's need got it some too. alternative. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and no one's gonna look back, and he's gonna and he'll have a he'll if he's that kind of player, he's gonna dominate play, and he's gonna get an opportunity to go to the pros. My problem with the whole thing is again accessibility to guns, and two, since he's a freshman, what makes him want, what? I want to know his thought process. Why do makes him think he wants to go back to Florida? Go with get weed and run away from the police and, and yeah. come back to come back to Alabama. Yeah. This more yeah. there's there's a layer to the story that we're not getting that we're not getting. There's something more to the story we're not there's getting. A, there's because, always three sides, right? We only heard yeah, one, yeah. we only heard two sides, right? Him, him, yeah. his passengers, and we ha- we haven't actually heard the full full side but, of it. Because let's, let's be all real, speeding and smoking weed is nothing new at all mm-hmm. at any university. I've been I've known I went to Humboldt State University. 
Shout we, out to Humboldt we, State out there. Okay, yeah. you got you out there we growing good. it yourself. We good. I mean, okay. if you want to talk about marijuana. Dorm rooms. Rooms. Okay. If we talk about marijuana, I could talk about marijuana all day because I that's where I, I, I did four years of my education yeah. there, four and a half years. But I'm saying weed and speeding is nothing new. Having a having a gun is nothing new. Right. My thing is the, the whole thing around the story is the reason why. Why are you doing it? You're at a division one program, they have an NIL deal. You get paid every month. You get paid a stipend every month because you're an athlete. He's a privileged athlete, thought he could get away with whatever he thought he could get away with, and he got caught. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me see. It ain't that he driving. Done yeah. because other, other people doing it all the time. Georgia, Georgia, University of Georgia got three got three people that died in the last two years from their events. One guy right now is under investigation, and he's about to be a first round draft pick. So the exception it, go, it goes away. They're, they're, if you're a good athlete, things can go away. I think more we're more shocked the reason why, and that you, and you're a freshman, so you haven't even proved yourself. You haven't really been on the field yet, and you think you can go get away with speeding back from Florida with some weed and a gun? Yeah, yeah. Bring, bringing this distraction to the school, to the program, to you, your family, and all that. Right? I mean, it's, 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 all, just, all, it's just not a good look. It's just not. It's good. just a distraction, man. All it is yeah. is hey, top got him, found him. He ain't a baller, so he ain't the top player. Yeah. So. Hey, we need we need to report this because I guarantee you, if that was somebody, if that was a star quarterback, young that did that, this would be on hush hush. No one would be mm-hmm. saying nothing, especially, especially right around now, right? Because because right now, no one trying to get that nothing. money. Yes, that's true. That's they, true. This wouldn't come out until after the draft mm-hmm. if, it, if it came out even at all. So the fact that he was a freshman, he represents Alabama. The cop got je- got got zealous. He found he got 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 him one, got him one, yeah. and now he put it all out there. It's fine. Is the kid wrong? Absolutely. But more so than wrong, we need to figure out why he's doing it. What made him the need to go get weed and speed back in Florida? That's what Alabama should be asking. Why do you have to go back? We're paying you. You you, mm. you got an apartment. You got your own thing. You got yeah. everything you left the hood from you got now. You got your yeah. own apartment. You got access to a car. You get money every month. You eat you eat three meal, three hots in a cot every day. You you got a wow. TA helping you with your with your classes, right? So you you're not struggling. So so no. so so Riley, this this is a great st- day for you to be on because again coming from the education <laughs> side and again just just, just having this conversation it, it, it's almost like support services for these athletes for these students for these kids are lacking somewhere and I, I i don't know who needs to be in the room in the conference room who needs to be at the at the chamber of Con- all those board <clears throat> meetings to have that conversation with how, how do we not have Tony Mitchell's happen again how do we not have this young kid i, I know i know i know right now Come on. Lay down the law right now. If, if, if Nate Saban says, you know what? You're suspended from my team. I will not sign your letter of release. And you're going off the team for at least a year for two for violating these team rules. Guarantee it. Echo through all the NCAA and nobody else will tell you. It'll, be, it'll set the standard. All right. Yeah. But no but but right. you won't do that because there's too much money involved. Oh He's a God. quality athlete. He can play. Me- yeah. Remember, you go to the national championship, man. Your school, if you go just attend a national championship, your school is getting damn near seventy-five million off the top. I don't. I, are you going to let seventy-five million go for? Would you let your son not sign a seventy million five seventy-five million dollar contract just because he's smoking weed and in, in, in speeding? Man, I, I'd forge. Listen, I forge your name. Exactly. I for, I, listen, don't don't, don't exactly. let my son get get. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna talk about. So, it, so yeah. you know what I'm saying. So so much yeah. money is involved, and it's it's not. Someone's gonna have to set the precedence at a Nick Saban label, a level to say, hey, you know what? This is the precedence from now on. If you break team violations, if you break team rules, or if you do this thing to embarrass the university. Unfortunately, like I said, we're only talking about this because the cop put it out before. I'm pretty sure he talked to Nick Saban. Because typically, this is how it usually happens. If you get in trouble with the law, they call the coach or they call the people in the in the office saying, hey, we got one of your players in trouble, blah, 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 to, to get the story right. Right. I think this dude, whoever arrested him, let, leaked it out first. That's why Nick Saban's up there has to explain himself. Because otherwise, he wouldn't get up there to explain anything. That's the reality of Division One sports, especially at that high level. When yeah. does something goes yeah. wrong, man, it doesn't, it doesn't, it ain't like, hey, he just got arrested to go. I mean, we got people... We could have tested. Yeah, we talked about New Mexico like what two weeks ago, right? Yeah, they got yeah. two murders in New Mexico. True. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 and I, I just want to be be clear. I just want to be clear. New Mexico 
State. See, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, New Mexico State. Excuse me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and throw it out there. Tell them why you want to be be clear on that. Go yeah, ahead. You, yeah. you, you got well, some. No, people. no disrespect to the Lobos. No disrespect no, to the yeah. Lobos. That, that's the Cowboys. <laughs> so, but I mean, we, we, <laughs> those situations, yeah. are, those situations happen all the time, man. I think just you got the, the guy who ever let this news out is not is is the, is just an idiot. The, the 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 cop just was an idiot, I guess, or he just jumped the gun. I'm saying the bigger picture and pulling back the onion again, you better figure out why he's doing this instead of yeah. he did it. Yeah. But why did he go do it? So you can prevent the next person that's in that same situation to not do it. Yeah. Well, you know what? If, if you know, let me drop a couple of nuggets, right? Yeah, so yeah. we see that the infraction uh, happened in Florida. So, you know, it could have been that they might have been on spring break, right? And so you're yeah. not going to have those those That's counselors true. and and folks who are you know supposedly you know in the room or helping you know with this program or whatever the case might be with this schedule and you know it could have been spring break right so uh you know my sons my two sons was just here one just left today going back to his college the other one left on sunday going back to his college and, and guess what they were here for spring break right thank god that they came home they came home Right. Mm -hmm. They didn't, you know, one wanted to go somewhere else and kind of hang out. But normally they come home to hang out with family during spring break. Right. And so maybe this was the case for this young man. He decided to go home mm. for spring break <laughs> and mm -hmm. he got caught up. He got caught yeah. up. Right. Yeah. And so, it, again, it goes back to the people that you hang with, uh, the decisions that you make. And if you're not in a position to realize, OK, this action might um, be detrimental to my scholarship. It mm -hmm. might be detrimental to the team, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the case might be, then, you know, the, somebody like, you know, Montel said, some of these guys have, you know, they're privileged athletes. And so, um, you know, again, you got to make better decisions. Stop, stop being who, you know, society wants you to be right. Be someone. I said make better decisions, but I think you need to have a stiffer punishment when these things do happen. Yeah, there and absolutely, Abs I, I totally agree. Something mm -hmm. you know, like you said, Nick Saban, they they need to put down the law, or even in the, uh, in um, NCAA, they need to put down the law or a rule, just like they did with this this NIL madness. They need to mm -hmm. come up with something as well, and 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 yep. in fact, everybody who is you know on uh, you know. Uh, 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 a, a team, you know, all these players because they're making money. They're making buku money, yeah. right? You talk yeah. about the national championship. And so, you know, the football teams, the basketball, they need to do something so that they can help these, you know, young men and young ladies uh, represent and, you know, help them kind of guide them down the right path because Make they're going to have decisions. a lot of freedom. Yeah. Make better decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. I was looking up to see where Tony Mitchell's from. He, his hometown is in, is in Alabama, Alabaster, Alabama. So again, maybe just spring break. And I didn't even think about that. Right. Again, all, all, all the students are going around and Florida's right there across the border. So that's, that's probably the situation. Easy Hopefully he learns from this. Hopefully he learns from this and, uh, glad no one was hurt. Uh, hopefully, yeah. uh, Coach is definitely going to lay down the law, at least in, in the locker room. So we'll, we'll see how this all play, pans out as well. But, uh, again, this is just one of those unfortunate situations that happen. Third story. Still talking about, unfortunately, the same type of precedent. But we're going to get we, – we, we may end with this one because uh, this one may take a little bit more time and more conversation. So if, if you got a drink, if you're drinking coffee, you drinking your water, whatever, go ahead and take a little sip right now. We, we may get into this because there's a lot of aspects to what's going on with uh, – John Moran. Mm. John Moran, we, we, we know, has had a number of situations that have happened. We know that he's been suspended for a while. He could have came back to play last night, but his, his body wasn't ready. Right, He's got to get back into playing condition. But the team has actually decided that, look, at, when, when John does come back and we are out of town, when, when, when we go to Miami, when we go to Los Angeles, hey Vegas, you can say Los, when, you can say Vegas. When we go to you Vegas, can say Los Angeles, <laughs> you know, when, when we go to those types of spots, that night when the, when the clock strikes zero 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 on on, on the game, yeah, they going home. They yeah. not they not staying around. The team has made it. <laughs> it's, it's even difficult for me to get this out without even laughing. 
the Memphis Grizzlies has said, you know, we're going to change our whole protocol for away games because of the situation that's happened with y'all. And we are immediately going to leave that city. Those I'm trying to, I'm going to find the actual word that they use, but th- those more, uh, let me, let me find the word here. I'll, I'll find it. But those types of cities, the Miami's, the Los Angeles, the Vegas, you know that they're not going to stay around to, to make sure that the team and, and Ja don't get themselves into the kind of situation that unfortunately he had in Colorado at, at the strip club with the, with the firearm and, and all of that. Yeah. Your thoughts on this right here. And then I want to go into the other aspect that I told you about, about Ja Moran as well. Your thoughts on what the Memphis Grizzlies are doing for Ja. You want me? Um, Y'all, y'all, go, y'all go right ahead because I'm trying to find I'm trying to find the exact wording that they use. It, it was very hey, very clever marketing. Uh, I'll go real quick. Let me go first real quick. Go yes. ahead, oh, yeah, Montel. Sad man. Is that, what's, what's so sad about sad. it, man? What's what's wrong? What's wrong with you? You, you mad, mean to tell me that an organization has to change the way they do business because this knuckle oh, this God. dude don't they feel this dude is 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 not acting right? Yeah. Where's see this 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 is the problem I have with this. You're now laying the responsibility on the organization and not and not the accountability of Josh's actions. Mm-hmm. The Josh wants to be responsible for his actions as a grown man for one, as an athlete for two, and as a role model for three. Yeah. So, so these, why do so I have these, to so take these glitzy these I'm glitzy doing? cities? These glitzy cities like Miami. We're not gonna we're not you gonna know, stay around. Okay. We could be in <laughs> Dubai. We could be we could be in Miami or yeah. on Freak Fest <laughs> in Atlanta, and he should be able to control himself and act like a damn adult. Shouldn't he? No, especially especially when the ringleader of his squad is who, Mr. Riley? Who is it? Who's it? The ringleader of his squad is his dad. Uh, what, his yeah, dad? I was about to say his dad. His, his dad. His, the ringleader of his squad yeah. is his dad. Well, then, well, then you know what? Do like the Lakers did and ban ban his dad from coming to any functions, mm. just like the Lakers did with Ball. They sure did. If that's the case, they sure did. I'm going to suspend your daddy from coming to any function because me as an organization, you mean to tell me, uh. Uh, Apple's gonna change the way you do business because they can't trust you on traveling. Oh, you know what? After the <laughs> conventions, we got to make sure James and Montel's yeah. in their room. Yeah, come and on. And they got to right away after they present the convention. Man, that sounds idiotic to me. That sounds come crazy. On. That that's that's what's the happening. Grizzlies, that is that has happened are, from the boardroom of the Memphis Grizzlies. They are changing I, the I'm entire right protocol. Now, okay. The Grizzlies need to be embarrassed mm. for themselves. What kind of standard are you setting as a professional organization that you now I'm not in control, John's in control. We got to make sure we leave the city right away because we don't want to get John in trouble. Yeah. Man, John better get his ass right. I'm gonna cut that. I ain't gonna cut that check no more. That's what's gonna happen. Right. That's what. Yeah. That's what it should be. It should be. They should be setting the standard, saying, you know what, John, if you're gonna go out, you better have these protocols in place. John, if you're gonna go do something, you better have these protocols in place out of your own pocket, out of your own dime. Because as soon as you and your daddy mess up. Uh, uh-uh. you know what? You'll be suspended for a hundred games now. This Whatever the case story. they want to be. This <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. This is taking away the accountability for Jaws' action, and that kind of pisses me off. Because this, now this, this shows you who's in control. Me. This actually yeah. also shows you who really is in control. So, James, talk talk to us a little bit about your your thoughts on this aspect. Again, the, the entire <laughs> Memphis Grizzlies staff is saying we're gonna change our entire dynamic of how we operate when we're on away games because. This guy may end up at a strip club with a with a gun in his hand <laughs> on IG Live, and we don't want that to happen again. But we we can't have a. See, I, I don't even want to put words in your mouth. Talk to me with, with, when you when you see this, man. man this come so, on, this, come on. This man. is so you know what here. You you probably set this up for just just to talk about choices because here we go. Here we go again. Damn, we're talking son. about choices, right? Here you know, just like. Just like Alan Iverson talked about uh, practice, yeah. practice, we talk about choices tonight. <laughs> Man, this is so you you get out, you getting paid all this money, right? Well, first mm-hmm. let's, let's 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 talk about the daddy. Let's talk yeah. about the daddy, right? Let's talk about the daddy. You know that, that that's I crazy. No I would daddy. never. And I, and I say that on t- I say that on live TV right now. I, I would never that. act like that if uh, you know that's crazy, yes. right? Money changes, folks. Money changes, folks, yeah, and so, uh, you know, d- dad got to dad got to represent and be a parent instead of a friend. Mm, That's what's say happening. That one more time, mm. you know. I, I, I'll say it for the back row. Mm. Daddy has to be parent, and maybe daddy hasn't been a parent since Jaws, you know, entry into the NBA or when he was playing college ball. He was one and done, correct? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, yeah. so one and done. Daddy, daddy hasn't been a parent in a long time because if daddy was a parent, then he would have had a much better influence on how his son is behaving. Now I know that you got you got you know women shaking your tails, shaking their tails, and being in the in the hotel lobby and X Y and Z. Right? We 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 know about that. But daddy got to he he got to represent right. Yeah. And then also Ja. He has to take responsibility. Why would you get on? People don't understand. I, I think some of these cats need a, a a course in social media one-on-one for athletes. Okay, you know, mm-hmm. maybe that's a course that, you know, the three of us can devise and 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 and, and mm-hmm. work together on because some notes. Hold on. Why, no, keep on talking. Why take would some you go? Wait a minute. Wait, why would you go on IG Live? Your own IG gun? Live. Right. Oh, Not somebody else's too. Not someone else filming and, you. You filmed yourself. And then wait, you in a strip club. Go, okay, go, now yeah. if you go after the game, do what you do, but why are you gonna be in the club with your gun up next to your head? Okay, uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Look, like, look at me, uh, look at me. I got all this money and I got a gun and I'm in a strip club. No, dude, make better choices. You're a franchise player, you're a role model. And so, what now was gonna happen, folks ain't gonna want to come to you, they're gonna yes. stop coming to you. Because you you're doing X, Y, Z. You're going to start messing yeah. up your money, right? You're, you're, you're going to make your money. It's going to start drying up or whatever the case like, may be. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quote Chris Rock. That's an attention whore right there. <laughs> yeah. You're an attention whore. You want to get some attention somehow. So you decide to put yourself on IG and he's addicted to attention. Mm. Whether it's, I guess whether it's positive or negative, in my point. And you're right. It's all yeah. about choices. But obviously, but it's all about choices. But obviously, he's not equipped to make the right choices because he's been making bad choices. And his father's not equipped to make the yeah. right choices because he's making bad choices, letting his son do it. So I'm saying, if I'm the franchise and I'm the guy that's for cutting the check, I'm going to make the choice for you. Yeah, I'm going to lay down some ground yeah. rules, and I'm going to be very transparent with the rules are. And if you if you break them, this is what's going to happen. That's all that needs to be done with John. I don't understand why we why everybody wants to go all this stupid in all this situation. Look, John, period. Sit down with you. Listen, hey, we're going to Miami. Your ass need to be in yeah. about one o'clock. Curfew. <laughs> Curfew. What? Oh, I'm a grown ass man. Oh, I'm a you grown ass man, but I'm the one that pays you, and I'm paying you to entertain yeah. fans and yeah. get out there and win those games. So while we're in, yeah. when you're in the off season, you can go do what the hell you want to do. During the season, while we're flying you out here, your curfew is at one o'clock. If you matter want that fact, game check, yeah. If you want this game check, this is what you're gonna do yeah. to get this money. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you're gonna pay for a bodyguard to go with you everywhere you go. Absolutely. I, I told James Absolutely. last week. I don't understand his circle. John's circle. It it, it behooves me because. I'm always about protecting the bag. If he's the bag, yeah. ain't nothing happening to him. He's not going to give you There's no negative shine going to be on him mm. at all. If, if, if there's, if there, if we was fighting pit bulls, Michael Vick wouldn't have went there. I would have <laughs> went to jail. <laughs> that's that's, I'd a, like, that's, that's my ring. He okay, that's the truth, though. He that's true. Bag, Lord have mercy. <laughs> so Absolutely. So John Michael would have been like, yo, there's no way you're going to have no gun for one. You don't need a gun. We're right here. For two, all right, you in the strip club. We're going to be right here. We're going to watch you, man. You do what you do. We'll be, we'll be cool. It's funny. John Morant hangs with his crew and no bodyguard. Mike Tyson, who was the dangerous, most dangerous man in the world, had a bodyguard. Yeah. 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 No, it's, so he, it's, and you know why? So he doesn't make stupid decisions. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> Josh's job, man. I mean, I, this is a this story. Whoever wrote this story, it needs to be fired because this is a waste of ink. Well, so the story is 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 on a lot of publications, but I think the 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 action is is, is the issue that, that that I'm I'm bringing it about, right? The, I'm, yeah, the yeah, action of the it, Memphis Grizzlies, of the Memphis Grizzlies is what I'm what I'm talking about. This is all all I, over the major publications. I, 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 I understand that, but it's a waste. I mean, to me, it's a waste of ink and a waste of the story. I, I, I hear you. Look, so look, Doc, uh, do do what the hell I tell you to do, or we go fire your ass. It's as simple as that. It's simple as that. We, so so, like, so let me let me ask you guys about this then because again along the same lines with with the jaw situation we've had another jaw we've had Ja Rule mm-hmm. come out and say that the responsibility of this may not all be on just Ja Morant himself the responsibility mm-hmm. for the actions and I'm paraphrasing I'll, I'll put the link in the mm-hmm. story of, of this complex article if you want to but Ja Rule is saying mm-hmm. that the hip hop culture hip hop music the influence of the, the music and the culture is partially to blame for John ja Morant and probably some of these negative actions and these negative types of behaviors that are that are, that are going on. What do you guys think about they, that? I think they are when you don't have guidance at home. 
Yep. My kids listen to the same thing, but they understand that's entertainment. That's not reality. That's all you got to say right there. That's wow. it. That's <laughs> that's it. That's, 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 I, I don't even pull nothing else out of you. That's all you, that's yeah, all you got to say that's, right there. That's, that's the God's wow. honest truth. I mean, we all been in that situation. We are, we've all grown up through that situation. We've all seen it. We've all was in the music. <laughs> we all, our pants sagged or they were baggy. We wore certain things. We wore bandanas. We always either were involved or had a friend that was involved in games. We've already been through all that situation. We understand. The music that was coming out and when they was singing, when NWA was singing and when Death Row was alive, we knew that was entertaining. Yeah, that's okay. That's cool. I, I like, I like it, but I damn sure ain't about to go shoot up nobody because somebody's saying something on a, on a song. So I, it, it all comes back home to your home, to your home training, your home, your home upbringing. Yeah. Uh, we as parents, all three of us, I'm pretty sure collectively know. Hey, we tell our kids that's entertainment. Creed is not real. You ain't gonna fight nobody and win in two <laughs> in, in two hours and, and win and be a, a, be the champion of the world. You're not gonna go and be able to shoot up a thousand aliens in one thing when you drop off. You're not gonna be able to be a, a drug smuggler because you're watching BMF. It that's entertainment. That's its entertainment value. You can be intrigued by it. You can understand it, but you also know, hey, reality comes right back home. And I think Jaws absolutely right. Hip hop is probably one of the most. It's the most influenced music in the world. But the gangster and, and, and the trap music. It's one of the most detrimental musics in the world because it influences the kids to do a lot, a lot of negative things. Yeah, yeah. Let so me, he's let right. Me, let me, he's right. Yeah. Sorry. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a disagree slightly because, right. um, man, listen, uh, you know, for, for real life here. Uh, so, you know, hip hop head, you know, listen to, you know, gang mm -hmm. of good hip hop, right? And so, uh. When my kids were young, I I chose not to listen to my style of stuff, right? My KRS one, right? My mm -hmm. boogie uh boogie down public enemy, you know, Biggie yep. Tupac. I chose not to because their ears were sensitive. However, when they got or became of age, I kind of introduced, you know, slowly some of the real music that I enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until like maybe uh, talking, uh, you know, my oldest son, uh, you know, when we were rolling around, uh, maybe in his sophomore junior years, when I felt comfortable with listening to rap lyrics that had profanity. Right. Because I already knew that he had a strong foundation. And, you know, so, you know, he wasn't going to go out and try to, you know, be, you know, be like Ice T six in the morning, police at my door. No, he wasn't trying to do all that because mm -hmm. he had a good foundation. Right. And so, uh, you know, I just kind of it, it just took and then, and now I'm able to kind of sit and, you know, my oldest is 22. My second is 20. You know, we can roll up and down the street, you know, listen to, you know, uh, Snoop doing what he does and everybody else. But I know that they're not going to go out and try to, you know, do whatever the rap song is talking about. Right. And so, mm -hmm. again, you know, there's there's boundaries. Uh, and so it, it might have a little influence, especially for those folks who didn't grow up in the same kind of environment that I did. Right. Mine was a little bit more loving and nurturing. And so realizing that, OK, uh, you know, folks are, you know, I don't want to say on the other side of the tracks, but, you know, they have a little bit more. Um, they're, they're prone to kind of, you know, be influenced by. Mm. the stuff that they listen to and want to emulate what they talking about. And so, you know, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to totally agree, uh, uh, disagree, but I think again, you know, if, if you have, and maybe we have a case of having folks who kind of grew up uh, in a, in a nurturing environment, and maybe we have some folks who didn't grow up in a nurturing environment where there's no discernment over here in the Riley world. There's some discernment, right? Because you're not going to have that. my kids. You're not going to have my kids shooting up or smoking or doing whatever. Nah, not over here, Jack. Because yeah. if you're going to do all that, it's time to pack your bags and be out. That's what, you know. And so, so that's going back, back to, to that's back to that family dynamic, though. That's back to yeah, that home back training. To we're we're dynamic. almost coming back to that whole type of mentality of, you know, it, it, it has to start at home. It has to start at that kitchen table with, you yeah. know, you have school at school, but when you come home, we, we've always told our kids, you have school at school, but you have school when you come home as well. So just, just Absolutely. Why, why is that missing? But I love that whole yeah. thing. Yeah, and then, yeah. Yeah, but, and then here's, here's the last thing. Here's my, before you hop in, Montel, because I know, you know, you, you can go for a little bit. So here, here's, you know, 
<laughs> but and, and I appreciate that. It, it, it ain't you know I ain't capping. You know I ain't, no, no, ain't bagging on no, you. No, no. Um, but no, I, I going back to uh, what the Grizzlies are doing. Yeah, man, you causing shame because now they gotta switch up their whole thing now, yeah. right? So it's no longer you know you spend the night and get up or whatever time you know whatever accommodations and, and arrangements they had. Now it's almost like okay, we gonna play this game because of this one dude. He don't know how to act. We all gonna get punished, and we yeah. soon as he soon as the game wrong. is over, we we got to roll to the bus, right? And I, I and I like what you said, Montel. Nah. If you can't do X, Y, and Z, then your behind needs to be cut or your 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 wages, you know, what you get paid because you're causing shame upon the city. You're causing shame upon the organization. Um, and so, you know, of course, they're going to come out with these apologies. On, uh, you know, I was like, really? Miss me with that. You know what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you would do it. Said, miss me with that. Miss me so, with that, you know. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that's my two cents. Appreciate that, man. We, we we're gonna go deeper into this. I think this Montel, we 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 need to go and have more in depth, kind of two hundred one, three hundred one level conversations about no, actionable I, I, yeah. items. Yeah, I think I think I think, but I think Ja Ja Rule is is on point. I do. Yeah. I believe he's on point. I think the influence of hip hop music has been somewhat detrimental. It 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 it, 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 it has been. It just has been, and. Mm. I can I can appreciate, you know, Mr. Riley, his his situation, my background, completely different. I mean, but I but I but my family, we're okay. I mean, my brother was was Batman. He was doing his thing and doing all that. I chose not to. Mm-hmm. It comes down to choices, right? And kind of where you where where you where you're at with your home life and what guidance you have at home. I I'm saying hip hop has played a bad part, man. I got I gotta agree with him, man. I, it just there's no way you can't say that to the music because we're so influential with the fashion, the style, the lingo, what comes with it, you know, and everything that comes with it. And we're still fascinated when things happen to them. You know, uh, rest in peace, that boy, Triple X, man, they just, you know, convicted his killers that mm, killed him. Yeah, yeah. He being rocky, was it you in LA? You know, you know that situation. Um, don't, don't, those things are very influential in our, in our, in our community and amongst people. And I don't know, know why. That hip hop culture, that negative part of hip hop, is done. And, and like I said at the beginning, when we grew up, we had balance, right? We had balance. Like you said, you like KRS One, you know, Rakim, all them. And then we had the NWAs and those guys. We had we had the balance. Today's kids have no balance. It's either gangster rap, was they say call it gangster rap, or they got trap music. So yeah, yeah. you can't say if you listen to the same thing over and over again, same style, that you're not going to be influenced by it. I'm influenced. I'm influenced by Tupac. I'm influenced by PE. I'm influenced by KRS One. I'm influenced by all those guys. Right. I, I still, we still write the same. We write to do the same lyrics. If it comes already, I can sing every word to it. Listen, so, I, I, I was rapping some Tupac last night at the gym. So <laughs> I, I, again, I, I took the day off when we lost. Too. So again, I so, feel so, the exact same way. Yeah. So you know, so if, if that's influence from us, and we're at the age we're not, can you imagine? What they've been listening to is all this trap music and all this negative music. Yeah, yeah. So it basically is an influence on them because our generation of rap is gone. They don't listen to that. It's old school. They really don't listen to that as much. They listen to what they listen to. And it, to me, I, I, I feel John Rule is right. I don't know if the, the people want to chime in. I think he's right. I think it's had, it's had a, a negative impact on our, our on our communities big yeah. time. Hey James, I'm gonna send you one of these Sony's. I got, uh, <laughs> I, I, I got, I got a couple of, I got a couple of mirrorless cameras. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you the ZV, <laughs> ZVE one. Hey, listen, yeah. listen, listen. Come on now. You are stop bagging on me. I'm, listen, you, you're no, gonna I'm, step I'm, away I'm... from the cannon. Step away <laughs> from the cannon. Man, brother. <laughs> I'm I'm not denying or confirming <laughs> about my candidate. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna leave them M fifties alone. Well, come on. Listen. <laughs> listen, it has COVID, so it's all good. Oh, it's Lord, all good. You know what I'm saying? It needs some touching. It needs its it vaccine, some, okay? So need, just leave my touching. That's all right. All right. <laughs> listen, we got we got two more stories, but uh we want to be really brief on those. I want to be cognizant of time and be respectful of your time. And I was just gonna ask you guys, uh I know you're really influenced and really deep into football but did you get a chance to check any of the uh, world baseball out and and see kind of the results of those matches and and oh, so you saw the highlights okay because you don't mm-hmm. like to watch baseball anyway because it's, uh, it's too long for you okay it's paint dry baby that's watching paint dry right? oh, <laughs> but uh what, what about you james did you, did you get a chance to check out any uh the world baseball you know classic 
I, I, I did not. I, you know, I am a fan of football. I mean, baseball. I am a fan of baseball. You know, I love my Dodgers, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, love going out to the ballpark when I get a chance. Um, but, you know, the World Baseball Classic, I know they're they're looking for a new audience or, you know, trying to build the audience in terms of international play and everything. Um, but, you know, I, I think my son kind of, you know, helped me out a little bit with, you know, some of the players. I know we were talking about a couple of days ago, Trey Turner had hit a, a, a nice yeah. uh, game. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, um, mm-hmm. was it two run home run or a grand slam? I'm not too sure. So, you know, we just kind of talked about it. But for me, it's like, OK, it's just it's just another event. Um, you know, so hopefully I don't know if did, how, how well did Team USA do? Did they get put out or? So that was actually probably the the bigger yeah. piece of the story about that because Japan and USA were playing against each other and uh, Otani bottom bottom of the night three balls two strikes Otani's on the mound and he's pitching to none other than uh, Mike Trout, Mike Trout. Okay. right yeah. so I mean that that's what kids want to see that's what the adults want that that's what the true fans of baseball want to see Otani ended up striking his teammate out Japan won. And just just that whole dynamic of having that happen. And what was really interesting for me, because I'm, I'm a huge baseball fan, was that a lot of those players said this was one of one out of two or three of their most memorable moments playing the game mm. ever. So yeah. regardless of a World Series pennant, regardless of a ring, regardless of anything else, playing for your country, right? Yeah. Mexico versus Venezuela versus Puerto Rico versus Japan, all, all of that kind of the Olympics of baseball that this couple of weeks, this week and a half was kind of that high of a, of a adrenaline push for them. So that happened. And yeah, Japan beat uh, United States by one. I think it was three to two was, was the score. So we will see what happens next year. I just want to get you guys' feel on that. Uh, and then we will end with a, a feel good story. Um, inclusion. Yeah. Right. Olivia yeah. Bacardi over mm-hmm. at Brown University in, in Rhode Island. Shouts out to Brown University. She got her chance to get up to bat. D1 school. Took a swing at a ball coming at her. She grounded out. It was about it was the bottom of the ninth, but she got her chance. So she was actually the first woman to play in a D1 baseball game. And th- that that's just got the weight of that. And and I can only imagine what the pitcher felt like as he was throwing to her. And then when she finally made contact with the ball, right? It, mm-hmm. Imagine if she had taken that thing for the, over the fence. <laughs> Man, he, he, yeah. he'd have been, but look, it would have been a whole different story. But just the fact that she was able to get up there and do that thing, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of young girls were looking at that and saying, listen, I can do that too. I, I'm just, I just think that's just a really cool story that uh, Olivia was able to get out there, be the first woman to play in a D1 uh, ball game. They lost the game. Yeah. I, no, I, 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 I love it. I love it because you talked about inclusion. You talking about, especially during uh, March, uh, which is a women's uh, history month. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's a wonderful thing um, to, to have, you know, young ladies, if, if they're willing to go through the time and effort, um, you know, to participate, to be a part of, I'm not too sure if she's actually on the squad. Um, but, you know, she, she opted not to play softball, which is, yes. you know, you know, she's like, nah, mm-mm. I don't want to play softball. I want to play baseball. And so she gave it the college try. And so, you know, again, um, if she's on the team, then, you know, I mean, stories like this is, you know, they're, they're wonderful. They're, uh, they're inspirational because there might be other girls who might want to play baseball instead of softball. Right. Uh, You know, you think about the, 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 the emergence of girls football, right. Or ladies football Mm -hmm. right now. And so that's, that's, that's taking shape, you know? And so at, at some point in, in the very near future, there might be a young lady, you know, playing professional football. Right. And so, you know, we just have to get ready for it. Um, Now we always see the, the opposite side, right? So, you know, if I'm thinking about uh, let's say just cheerleading, we see guys on the cheerleading squad, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you, you kind of flip the dime on the opposite head. So now we have a young lady who's on the boys, you know, D one baseball team, you know, so it's, you know, it's, it's a feel good story and yeah. you kind of like to hear things, uh, like that. And so, yeah, you know, the guy probably would have been the laughing stock or he'd, he'd have had a hard time player. in the, in the locker yeah, he room. Would've, he would have <laughs> got a hard close. time. Right. It was close. Like but, she, she was moving, <laughs> but 
he would have been a part of history, right? Yeah. Even though, you know, uh, and he's still a part of history at, at some point. And so uh, it's just a feel good story and good for her, good for Brown. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just hoping that she is a part of the team. I'll go back and kind of check the article and see yeah. if she's actually a part of the team or if they just said, okay, well, let's allow her to play. Well, she's listed as game. a utility player. So again, probably okay. like a DH or, you know, something, something of that nature. So, uh, and, 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 and as long as she's on the squad, she's on the squad. So who knows? She, she might get a home run. She might get a hit, a double, triple, who knows, but she's contributing to the D one boys baseball team at Brown university. So good job, Brown. Yeah, it is. See, I'm not telling you don't like baseball. I'm trying to get you to like, no, no, that's no, why no, we, man, that's why we no. ended the night with some baseball you, stories. You know, like, come on, brother. You know. You know, we could have talked about the new that, rules, you know, the pitch clock and all that, but no. I no, I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, I will get into the baseball stuff. You know what happens? I'm just yeah. saying with this story, man, I think it just is groundbreaking. I mean, for her to be able to do that, be a part of the team, I'm ho- I'm hoping she's on scholarship at Brown. She's obviously very brilliant. And she's at Brown University. Yeah. So the one that's groundbreaking is she's been able to be in that situation and she's been able to participate in games on the men's side. I think it now just opens up the conversation now. I mean, as you alluded to, uh, you know, girls football is taking off. Maybe girls baseball will take off, not softball, but girls baseball. Absolutely. You know, and come and come to that situation. I don't know if it'll ever be integrated. I think men are too stubborn to make sure it's integrated like that. Women and men, it doesn't matter how good she will be, they'll always cast a situation where they won't I, be out. No, but I, I do agree. believe yeah. I do believe there is is now an opportunity for someone to, to, to piggyback off it is to have girls baseball and let them do the same rules as baseball and be and be able to be be in that creative space as far as playing professional baseball for women and even the co- collegiate level, not just softball, but baseball, because we know those are kind of, they're too different, especially on the way they operate. Um, I, I think she's groundbreaking, man. Kudos to her, man. I hope, hope she can keep continuing. I hope she can, I hope she can have some even much more success so we can talk more about her because that'll open even more eyes and more, there more people is. to be, be open to the conversation. There it is. James Riley, you came in this something tonight. Was you, was you, was you ready? Were, were you, you all right? You, 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 gonna, you, gonna be out, you gonna come back? <laughs> Listen, uh, come anytime you, you want me to come on back, uh, my man, uh, I'll come on back. And, uh, right. you know, like I said, it was it was a pleasure to uh, hop on with you guys. Like I said, from time to time, I'll peek in and, and hop in and, and uh, you know, and, and likewise, you do the same thing when I'm live. I see you yeah. throwing up the two fingers. So it's, it's all good. It's, 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 it's different for me. Um, and I think it, I said that in the green room is different for me. I'm usually the host. Um, so being on this side of the camera, I know, you know, my, my camera's not feeling too well, but still just having this opportunity to kind of chop it up with you and my tail, um, you know, just, just an awesome experience. And I, you know, I think I was ready. Um, and so, you know, we'll let the, the viewers and the listener and the, and the listeners to, uh, kind of, uh, see if I'm ready, but, you know, uh, folks have been kind of going off in the, in the comments. And so, yeah. like I said, Thanks for having me, man. Um, and and I'm I'm hoping that I added some value to the conversation oh, most tonight. Definitely. So most definitely. I, I tell you what, before it, before we let you go, tell folks where they can find you because I definitely want folks to know about <laughs> your channels and all of that stuff as well. So let's let's get some shots out to that. Absolutely. Well, I am on uh on YouTube. I haven't been creating too much content lately. Um uh, over here in Riley World, we've been kind of busy. So I just need to find some time to get back into, uh, to, to, to hosting. And, you know, uh, I, I did have a show called, uh, West coast Wednesdays, which was kind of on the same, around the same time that you were on. So, um, you know, we, we will probably spark that up and might put it on a different day and call it something else. Uh, but yeah, I'm on YouTube. Um, you can find me on YouTube, uh, uh just type in Mr. Riley's world. Um, and I'm also on Instagram. If you want to find me on the gram, uh, Mr. Riley's world one, the number one is my, uh, is my handle. And, uh, you know, I'm also on Facebook as well. So, uh, you know, you can get at me, um, you out there in, in one of streets. those platforms. Yeah, I'm out the industries right now, yeah. right now we striking, we striking with, uh, like I said, the <laughs> yeah. solidarity with my uh, local 99. And so just, just having fun, man. I told my group, uh, tomorrow's going to be the last day of our uh, three-day strike. And I told the group, it's like, look, we're going to be professional strikers <laughs> this last day. So um, I'm, I'm just excited. I was able to go out and rally and chant and uh, had some time to kind of kick back and get ready for this live stream. And so tomorrow we're just going to give it our all. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that the city officials will get involved um, in, in helping the negotiations for the two different unions. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, you know, we're done tomorrow. We'll go back to work on Friday and uh, it's a wonderful thing. So um, y'all, y'all say a prayer, give us some positive thoughts uh, down here in LA unified as we kind of you know, figure this thing out. And uh, you know, again, man, just, uh, you know, this is a wonderful platform that you and Montel 
um, have discussing sports, the social impact of sports, and uh, just getting some of the topics out there. So, man, I appreciate you having me on and, uh, you know, can't wait to happen uh, till it happens next time. Appreciate you, man. Hey, Monta, he just took your closing. He, he, he but I, I'm, I'm still gonna oh, yeah. we're gonna let you have your oh, flowers too. But, but Mr. Riley was, uh, I'm glad I was recording because I'm gonna use, I'm gonna cut that out. <laughs> yeah, we, we may use that in the future. Go, go ahead and take us home, don't Montel. Yeah, definitely. Um, first of all, uh, shout out and prayers to uh, Willis Reed, the great basketball player for the New York He passed away today. Rest in peace. Uh, I got to give a shout out to my boy Chris. His mom is sick. Chris, Chris Smith. Hope his brother gets better. My prayers are with you. And you know what, man? Just get comfortable having uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we got to go. That's where we leave out. Salute. Y'all be good to yourself.